Hi there and welcome to the next episode in my Citroen Relay van build series. In this episode I am going to be fitting my Bullfinch outdoor shower attachment. Let's do it! So we've been away a couple of times over the last uh, couple of weeks uh, on some, some first initial trips. Uh, I think if you're watching from America, you probably call that the shakedown cruise, but uh, uh, essentially a couple of weekends away, which is why there's not been an awful lot of videos over the last few weeks. Um, just to test and check and see how everything is going. And uh, it, yeah, it's come up with a, a few things. Uh, I want to uh, change a couple of minor adjustments to things and also some extra things to do, which uh, includes today this Bullfinch outdoor shower attachment. Um, so the, the reason for that is uh, basically being able to uh, wash off uh, muddy shoes and welly boots during the winter on the outside of the van, rather than uh, traipse in that uh, mud inside. And during the summer for, uh, you know, getting sand off your feet when you go to the beach and things like that. Um, so uh, I think all round that's probably quite a good idea. So that's what I'm going to be uh, fitting today. So let's uh, turn you round, have a look at the table and go through what I've got, the tools I'm going to need. And uh, and then I'll talk you through uh, how I'm doing it and, uh, and what I'm doing. And again, like all my videos, there's no right or wrong to these things, is there? I'm just going to show you the way I'm doing it. Some people might think, oh, that's, that's, that's all right, that's good. Yeah, I'll do that. And other people say, you bloody idiot, that's a load of old crap. Um, but that's YouTube, isn't it? That's YouTube. Right, let's turn you around. So, starting off at this end of the table, there's the old uh, Bullfinch uh, adapter. Um, so it comes with a, 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 what's it, a cover flap on the on the front uh, when you don't need it, which uh, opens up, which is, oh, blimey, that's stiff being new. Right, there we go. Um, so that's what it looks like and then on the back you've got two uh, prongs that stick through and they're nicely colour coded look so you know which one is which and it just comes with a, a couple of screws in there and your attachment here so that goes into the uh, the, the fitting and then you've got a, a spray hose with a with a trigger on it the, the other end um, now interestingly just to uh, you know make these things uh, fun and exciting um, these uh, here are 15 mil and not 12 mil. So what I've had to do is, and uh, this will also talk you through what I've bought. So starting here, just went to my local DIY store and got some uh, John Guest 15 mil uh, elbows. I've already opened uh, one of these. Let's uh, show you that. So there we go. So that will go onto the the fitting. I've then got some 15mm to 12mm uh, adapters. Uh, I've got my uh, T-pieces to uh, cut into the existing uh, plumbing to get a connection. We've got a couple of valves here to be able to turn the flow uh, on and off. Um, some, some pipe, not going to need an awful lot of pipe inside, so just a, a bit of scrap off cuts of the red and the blue there. And some uh, pipe pipe inserts. Uh, moving along, we've got my pipe uh, pipe cutter for, for cutting this. And then over here, we've got uh, the usual sort of stuff you're gonna need for these sort of jobs. So I've got a Stanley blade, pencil, tape measure, masking tape, which is generally the most important thing, uh, hole cutters. Um, it says on, on the blurb for this that you need between 60 and 65 millimeter. Well, luckily my biggest one here is uh, is 64, so that's going to do the job brilliantly. Uh, I've also got a file for filing off the hole that uh, that, that we cut and getting rid of the sharp edge. Uh, then some uh, hammerite and a brush for for you know painting the edge that we've just created. Um, always going to need a, a screwdriver and a range of screwdriver bits invariably, I would imagine. Um, drill for cutting the initial pilot hole and the actual drill itself. Moving along, some uh, Sikaflex. For this particular job I'm going to use Sikaflex 522 or 512 as it used to be called. I think that will do, uh, do fine. Um, we're going to need an off cut of a bit of cardboard. Uh, an offcut of plywood to make the little frame on the inside and the all-important uh, lovely cup of tea. Right. Oh, incidentally, this um, this bullfinch does come with a, a rubber 
um, a rubber insert you can see it there but uh, I'm still going to sick a flex that as well just for belt and braces on that rather than just rely on that uh, rubber insert right that I think is generally what I'm going to need to do this job um, so let me talk you through my uh, thought process of where I'm going to put this Isn't this nice? It feels like spring has come at, uh, at long last. I mean, I mean, it's still chilly, but it's not sort of freezing your bells off weather anymore. And there's birds singing in the background and it's all good. Well, in amongst the bombs dropping anyway, because uh, I live right on the edge of uh, Salisbury Plain. And uh, let's just say over the last couple of weeks, the army have been uh, somewhat active with their training. So if you hear boom, boom, boom in the background, you know what that is. Right, let's have a look at where I'm going to put this. So obviously I need somewhere where I've already got some water uh, run to. Now uh, on the on the side door here, obviously I've got my sink up there. So one option I thought of was just to, uh, you know, pop it in here. Uh, so when the sliding door is open, you can connect in and do what you need to do. But then I thought, well, hang on a minute. That's probably not very good because that's going to be right underneath where the awning comes out. And if we have a driveway awning and some kind of mat down there, that's all going to get wet and... Uh, and so that's not going to work so i thought okay plan b let's go around the uh around the back here so at the back door here i thought well i got my my plumbing in the back corner here um so i could connect into there the only trouble is i've only got uh, cold water there all the hot water is uh through uh, through at the front the other end um so if i just want cold only that's possible but again, I thought, well, if I put it on the inside here, I'd have to build some kind of box section to 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 um, house it. And then you'd have to have the back door open to be able to use it. And then I'm a little bit worried then that when you're actually operating it and taking the attachment in and out, you're going to get some dribbles of water come out, which is going to go onto the floor here. Um, so that wasn't ideal either. So I thought, right, I'm kind of running out of options now. So... Obviously, at the back here, I could have lined it up with my, um, you know, with my water waterworks here. So that's the uh, infill for filling the uh, the fresh water tank, and that's my whale connector for when I want to connect to the mains water. We'll go through all that when we do the van tour in a bit more detail. So I thought I could put it there by the side of that, and uh, and use it around the back of the van here. Uh, but again, I just got cold water, so not ideal. Um, so what I've decided on in actual fact is if I just pan around here you can see my toilet cassette door there is already pre-open ready so this is on uh, you know what's going to be the back side of the van and uh, underneath here um, because of the way I've done my uh, my toilet I've got a nice bit of depth here to play with and also I've got hot and cold waterworks coming through here and if I just tuck you around the corner here, you can see here I've got a red and a blue pipe, which are the pipes that go up to the uh, the shower uh, in inside the shower cubicle. So what I've decided to do in actual fact is I'm going to stick it on the side here because uh, there's plenty of space for all the connections and the gubbings inside. And I've got a hot and cold feed right there. And then A, I can keep an eye on those connections because it's all just in there. And B... It's around the back of the van here, out of the way. So uh, let's just set the scene. You've gone to the beach in the summer and you come back and uh, you've got uh, wet, sandy feet and flip-flops. Uh, you can come around the back of the van here, away from the awning and, uh, you know, spray off your, your feet and uh, job's a winner. Right then, so first things first bit of cardboard on the floor you know for the old knees because I'm officially uh, an old fart now aren't I so do that right and uh, we're just so I've given this a, a clean and a wipe off here the whole van could do with a good clean really but that's for another day isn't it um, so first things I'm going to do is basically mask off the entire section where I'm going to want this to go it does seem a bit wasteful on uh, masking tape I know but Trust me, it's the best, uh, the best first job you'll ever do all the time. Right, 
the reason for this extra sort of scrap bit of cardboard here is uh, really just for the iron filings again, just for some extra belt and braces on, the, on that because it seems a bit overkill, but these uh, metal filings, when you make holes in vans, are just the worst because they manage to get into every single little nook and cranny and then they sit there and they rust and then they rust your van and it just turns into an absolute pig of a nightmare of a job. So what I'm gonna do, look, is put a piece of cardboard there so anything comes down, shoots away from the hole. And I'm also going to put a bit on the other side. I'm gonna put a bit there. Now I'm ready to measure up where I want to uh, cut this. So I'm just going to take some measurements and I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes when I've made my mind up. Right, so I've decided on my location and that's through having, you know, having a good feel around on the inside, see what's there and uh, how that's going to work out with the pipes on the inside. And I've decided middle is going to be there. So although I put it on back to front, um, he's going to sit there in relation to the to the toilet door there, so that should be uh, a okay. So I think I'm just about ready to uh, to make a start on this. Oh no, I'm not. I haven't done the uh, cardboard on the inside, have I? Okay, so I've got some more um, of this cardboard and some other material on the inside to try and catch out any filings that go uh, that go through as well. And also, I can get a Hoover in through the side, uh, you know, through the the toilet cassette door to uh, aid with that in a minute. So I think we're just about ready to uh, ready to go. So let's uh, drill a little pilot hole and then get this uh, hole cut out. Just for belt and braces, I'm going to double check once more that I'm using the right uh, the right size because that would be uh, that would be a disaster, wouldn't it? Just checking that on there. On there. Okay, good, I'm happy with that. So that's worked out quite well. So uh, on the inside now, we can see the blue and red pipe that go to the, the shower is just in behind there. There's my uh, insulation look in there as well. And uh, the cardboard has done the trick brilliantly because if I look down where my feet are now, can I get in close enough for you to see that? Yeah, there's all this all over the cardboard on the floor here, all over the uh, drill box. So all those shards have come down, deflected away, and it's all on the floor down here out of harm's way, rather than all over the side of the van. So a couple of scraps of cardboard actually does the job perfectly there. Honestly, I'm such an idiot, aren't I? I mean, how can I put a camera into bloody time-lapse when a GoPro's only got one sodding button? Oh, it's an age thing, isn't it? It's an age thing. Anyway, what you just saw in time-lapse was me basically saying that, uh, hang on, let me just turn you around here. <laughs> what a tit. Right, um, was, um, you know, to uh, use the file and uh, and, and file around, uh, around there, but uh, I, uh, and what I was actually saying, uh, which I did a smashing job of, was to leave the masking tape on while you're filing in case the file comes out and jabs the side of the paintwork accidentally. 
Um, so I filed the uh, hole and then I used some hammerite paint and uh, I've painted around the hole and um, that's just drying off nicely now uh, while I go and prepare the wooden frame for the inside. And I'll try to remember not to put it into time lapse again like a complete tip. Oh, it's all a laugh, isn't it? Right. My son said, use the GoPro, Dad, it's only got one button, you can't possibly go wrong. Oh, I'm damned. Right, bit of a 12mm ply will do the trick here just fine. Um, I'm just going to check uh, where I've got a square uh, square edge. Uh, mostly on uh, on this end here I've got a square edge, so we'll, we'll go with, uh, with that. And uh, oh, let me just get the, uh, the ball finch in a minute. Right, this uh, this doesn't need to be precision at all, does it? I've got plenty of space on the inside. So what I'm going to do is uh, just allowing for plenty of meat around the outside to, for these screws to, to fit into. Um, actually, just about there. I'm just going to mark it there and, and there. And that will do as a as an external internal frame. So let's uh, just join up the lines there. Right, so that's going to be the size of my uh, frame, so now I'm just going to cut a hole straight through the middle here using the same hole saw of course, because then that will line up uh, with the, with the bodywork on the inside. So we'll just go uh, plumb in the middle with that, or as near as damn it is to swearing as my dad uh, does say. That was harder to cut through than the middle of the van. Okay, grab the old battery off of there. One great thing about using these Makita tools is, and this isn't an advert for them by any stretch of the imagination, was the battery, uh, the battery fits everything. So you just uh, keep swapping the battery round for the tool that you need. Makes things nice and simple. Right. Right, there's my little frame, simple as that. So first things first, we definitely need these two 15mm um, elbows. So they just simply push on and then tighten up. up like so then I'm going to put my 15 mil to 12 mil adapters in so again they just push in into the end there and tighten that up right so now we've made our our bend and we're now on to uh, 12 mil push fit which is what we want so I've got a nice edge there so I'm just going to cut a uh, a length off here and the same with the blue I've already got an end in that end not quite sure why but uh, we'll go with it it works doesn't it to uh, to those end pieces um, in. I think you don't have to use these but I've been using it all the way around and uh, must admit by doing so I haven't had any leaks at all so uh, definitely think it's worth it. They're a bit of a fight to get in sometimes but uh, it's all right. So on both sides of that. Okay. So now red is that side, so that can just simply push home, and the blue as well, like that, and then my uh, 
isolators can go on there. I don't think there's a particular way round for this, not really. Actually, I suppose if I have the on facing down, it would be that way round. So they, uh, they just go on like that. Um, like that. Pretty simple. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is get these uh, screws, screw holes uh, drilled uh, for, for mounting the front. So again, um, just for marking these, we need a bit of uh, tape where the, uh, the holes are going to be, just like so. And then I'm going to... Uh, Well, that didn't work, did it? So that's uh, <laughs> a change to another plan there. Right, so we'll do it, uh, we'll make the connections on the inside. Okay, so let's get that through anyway. And uh, kind of lined up with the, uh, with this. Okay. And then using my pencil, I'm just going to mark where these are. Right, so I think I'm just about ready to uh, sickerflex and screw. So, first things first is let's get this uh, little rubber gasket on and into place, like so. And looking at where that sits. I'm going to stick a flex just tight in around here, I think, which will basically come in around here, and that should be uh, a okay. Or better still, no, I'm going to stick a flex onto this, I think, and then um, squidge it in. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Right, wish me luck. So I got my drill ready, my screws ready, and uh, could do with about three pairs of hands now, of course, or even four, but uh, we haven't got them, so we're just going to have to uh, give it a whirl. Okay, and then hopefully I should be able to feel the hole in there, which I can. One thing I'd add at this point is those little um, little black washer, rubber washers you get um, in there are, are, are utter crap. Right. That's got that off my chest, isn't it? Right. Now let's uh, work on this uh, pipe work. Okay, so I'll show you the uh, the connections inside in just a second, but uh, we're all done and we're and we're ready. So, 
how it works is you simply open that up uh, you put the, the nozzle in and connect it and uh, there we go and uh, I've got it set to the hot section here and the Truma boiler is on and uh, yeah that's actually uh, pleasantly warm and then you can go all the way around and then you get uh, then you get cold and uh, so actually for washing dirty shoes uh, for washing sandy feet for washing bikes wellies that's uh, that's absolutely spot on uh, and I'm glad I put it on the outside because definitely when you take this out um, you do get a bit of a dribble uh, come down uh, which is the only uh, the only nuisance there actually one thing I would uh, show you is uh, actually there's quite a bit of pressure here. so this is just on one of those um, shore flow uh, water pumps and I've just put some water in the fresh water tank so I got it set to the the cold setting and actually that's not too bad at all is it you know as a uh, as a little outside shower point goes and even with it on the uh, hot mode there's still uh, you know still not too bad right let me take you into the catacombs uh, so to speak and show you how i've connected this up so uh, moving in okay so, so you can see all my insulation uh, up in there look so that's the uh that's the the connectors um off the back of the bullfinch uh, there and then up above here we've got the uh the isolators for that and then the the pipe work basically just does a, a loop round uh, a loop round here and then just plums into the feed that's going to the shower and the cold one is the same so i've plumbed into the shower feed there and it comes off here just does a loop round through there and into the uh into the bullfinch um, so that's actually working, uh, working just fine. The, the, the. Okay, so then once this is all uh, put back together like so, that's what we got. Marvellous. So if you're thinking of installing a uh, Bullfinch uh, external shower point, I hope that's been uh, useful to you. Um, that's actually gone quite straightforward uh, for me all in all. And I'm quite pleased with the uh, result there. That's got quite a nice um, nice pressure to it and, uh, and is all good. And uh, tool wise, I think we were bang on there, weren't we with all those tools? The only thing I didn't really use was the screwdriver and the Stanley blade. Apart from that, everything else came in, uh, came in very handy. So, hope you've enjoyed that. Please remember to like and subscribe, blah, 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 and I'll see you next time.